Earlier this year, we set some big, bold goals for 2030. Four goals to drive our behaviour in the business and to aspire to as we seek a, a better future for everyone. The first of those four goals is net zero waste by 2030. We have been working on our waste streams and working out ways we can do a lot better with them and send less to landfill. But I'm really excited today to talk about our textile initiatives and a recent partnership we've forged as a foundation partner with Blocktex. Blocktex came about after a long conversation with Graham Ross, a couple of glasses of wine, and our clear view that we should actually do something to, to deal with the textile waste issue rather than just talk about it. And so we decided to build a business that actually uh, reprocesses textiles at volume, at scale, here in Australia. And here we are standing in our, Australia's first textile resource recovery plant that will scale at 4,000 tonnes a year with our first reactor and then we'll scale to 10,000 tonnes from there. It actually feels really good. It actually feels like we've really achieved something and, and it is a world first as well. So we're really, really proud of it. In 2021, we developed our new strategic plan and quickly identified that sustainability was going to be an integral part of our business. We want to be an organisation that is successfully sustainable by connecting with our planet, our people and our community. The average person might not know that a lot of the fabrics we wear these days in essence are not much different to the plastic bottle we might drink out of. As fabric technology has improved we've found more and more man-made fibres finding their way into the textile industry. We're delighted now to have a solution for that. It might surprise you that Australia, per capita, sends more waste, textile waste, to landfill than almost every other country in the world. We're talking close to one million tonnes per annum of textile waste goes to landfill. To give you an idea of ELSCO's contribution, at any point in time, we have over 10 million items of inventory in circulation to our customer base, whether they be uniforms, whether they be food and beverage, tea towels, or perhaps accommodation linen. Some of those material or fabrics are 100% cotton, others are a mixture between polyester and cotton. Essentially, uh, we have invented and commercialised a, a, a process which we use a combination of chemicals, water, uh, pressure, heat, to literally unlock the cotton from the polyester and they're woven together or knitted together we unlock them and then when we've unlocked them they separate into two work streams the polyester work stream uh, goes and it is the polyester is washed all the cellulose is washed off it and then it is uh, dried and then re-extruded and reformed into a polyester pellet the cellulose goes another way and that gets uh, decanted or filtered, and then that's sort of, uh, in, in essence, centrifuged or spun into a thick clay, and that's what we sell on into the hydromaltic industry. In our industry, we actually use garments between 30 and 150 times, or items of inventory like sheets for argument's sake. So we do recycle to a certain extent, but at a point of time, they're no longer fit for purpose and the quality needs to be upgraded and the old needs to, to find a new home. 
So we're really, really excited that we've been able to find a home for that product. And, uh, and I think also important for our customers and, and the wider community to understand that we can start to do something about textile waste. The second bold goal is around our people and community. We have a commitment to spend $8 million before 2030 in our communities and also supporting and training our people. Also by connecting with our community, uh, we have developed our Reconciliation Action Plan and we have commissioned Zach Bennett Brook, who is a Torres Strait Islander painter, to do a special painting for ALSCO. Uh, the colours that he's used represent our organisation and the different divisions, so there's lots of uh, greens and blues and we're delighted to uh, have that on display at our support office. Uh, we, want to, we want to recognise him as a great artist and we thank him very much for, for doing this terrific artwork. Our people are the lifeblood of our branches uh, and we want to support them and we also want to support our community and our staff are really passionate about sustainability. We've had great engagement in the community programs. The third sustainability initiative and, and one I think everyone will agree is, is critical to our planet is to reduce our outputs. Specifically by 2030 we are aiming to reduce our water usage by 20% and also become more efficient in our use of energy and reduce our carbon footprint by 20%. We have some significant initiatives in this area around modernising plants, investing in, in equipment. We have two fully electric trucks arriving early in 2023. And we're also embarking on a second major scale solar energy project in Melbourne. We wanted to get our staff and our customers engaged with what we were going to do in the way of sustainability and we identified energy uh, and how we could reduce energy, measuring the amount of energy that we use in all of our branches uh, so we could put a line in the sand and basically look from that particular point at how we could reduce our energy usage across our network of branches. And the last big bold goal is to ensure that we have 100% ethical supply partners. So we source a lot of products and, and we want to make sure that they are sourced ethically, that our suppliers are ethical operators and that's really important to us. We source a lot of our fabrics and textiles from other countries and it's important to know and I, I think our customers also want to know that we are sourcing from reliable and trustworthy supply partners where no issues such as modern slavery, child labour and, and associated problems exist. So we are really passionate about doing the right thing and ensuring our supply chain is squeaky clean.